Hey friends, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Web Dev. So this is my new course, the critical rendering path. That means how the browser performance the website. So how we can increase the performance of a website. Let's try to see in this course. So before learning about this one, so the browser, how the website or the how the web app renders in the browser, we need to know that how browsers renders layout render layout works we need to have a clear knowledge about this how the browser render layout works so let's try to see in this one theoretically so this course is completely tells us about how this website we can increase the performance in a application wise so in the browser so normally you try to see uh, if you check the web page insights in the dev a google thing so they will be giving you something like cum cumulative layout shift or last content painting so this type of parameters you will be having so you can have a look at i will show you all these things in this course so how we can increase this performance of a website we'll try to see in this one so this is very much important why because developing the website whole solely is not uh, not important why because we in the front end we can do it and also in the back end also we can complete it but making the website user interactive so with you opening the website within uh, breeze so that is the main thing we need to do it so we will see that how the browser actually works in rendering the layout and all those things. Let's try to see. So here, let's see that this, this video is about how browsers render layout works. All major browsers comprise subsystems. These subsystems help the entire render process. So here, what I am trying to tell you is all the major browsers. So which you are having that Internet Explorer like Edge, Chrome, Firefox. So these are all the major browsers have a subsystem. Subsystem means what I can say is something like a phases or stages. So these stages help the entire rendering process. So these different stages combinedly helps the entire rendering process. Rendering process means nothing but what I can say is the browsers, how the browsers display the web page in the screen. So that is the called as a rendering process. So in order to show the web page in the screen, so lot many stages it will undergo while displaying that one in the screen. So these are this is called as a rendering process. Let's try to see these all the things. So these subsystems are involved all the way from accepting the web URL to display web content on the screen. So these subsystems here I have written the systems. You can say subsystems or systems or stages or phases. So whatever the naming convention. So you can call it. So these phases are involved. So these all phases are involved from accepting the website URL. So you'll be having a website URL like the HTTP www.example.com. So from there to display the web content on the screen. So how the content will be visible on the screen. So these all the different phases are involved for, from accepting the website URL to displaying the web content on the screen. And they do this by making network calls, fetching resources, parsing the HTML, CSS and JavaScript files to create objects. So these all the phases, what I am trying to do is, so these all the phases, what these all do is, it will make the network calls, something like fetch XHR request, which we have learned in the previous courses, Ajax request and all the things, fetching in the resources. So resources means what I can say is the text files or the images and all the things. Also parsing the HTML, the HTML parser, which is also very much important, the CSS and the JavaScript files also. The browser also parses the HTML, CSS and JavaScript files. So these are all the different phases to create objects. So these are all the rendering tree object will be created. We'll try to discuss those all the things. So these are all the phases it will go. And these objects are used to render the data onto the screen. So the objects which we have created by parsing the HTML, these are all the things which are the phases undergoes. And these objects are used to render the data on the screen. And these all are all combined all these process and all these tasks and actions whatever it may be are referred to as rendering so these are all the phases what is that one making the network calls fetching the resources parsing the html css and javascript files everything and creating those all things in your dom object everything so these are all the process what i can say is you can say it is a process or actions or tasks whatever the task these all tasks or actions are referred to as rendering. Why? Because these are all taking part in order to render a web page on the screen. So that is the reason. In other words, the rendering process is how your browser shows a web page. 
So this is also in another way we can say that the rendering process is how your browser shows a web page. Normally the web browser loads files and displays them to you. Normally the web browser, whatever the web browser you are having, it will load the file and displays them to you. So this is the only the thing which you all the people, most of the people knows. So it will load the file, whatever the HTML file it is have it's needed, it will load the file and displays them to you. Normally. The browser figures out what to display to you based on the file type it receives. So this one you already understand understood. When you code in JavaScript, you are not coding in isolation. So this is also very much important you need to understand. When you are coding, the JavaScript code is there, right? So you are not coding in isolation. Isolations mean separate environment. Your JavaScript code interacts with the other environments. So when you are writing the JavaScript code in the browser means in the browser not only the javascript code executes it interacts with other environments so those environments means nothing but what i can say is the javascript engine works with three other engines in conjunction like the javascript engine which is more famous v8 so this one in conjunction with the it will work with the rendering engine and also the last one is the browser engine what i used to say normally we can say it as a browser so these all combinedly it will work so this is the main thing so JavaScript engine normally it can be V8 or anything Chakra or anything. The rendering engine, so which is a very much important, which we are going to learn in the future videos, and the browser engine, nothing but a browser. So these are all the things combinedly it will work. The rendering engine lives within the browser. This is one of the important thing. The rendering engine lives within the browser, and the rendering engine is a software. So it is a software. Most probably it will be written in the C plus plus. And it draws the text and images to the screen. So the rendering engine main functionality is to draw the text and images to the screen. And this this is a software. So software means you can know that. So series of steps or anything will be the rules and regulations. And this software most probably will be written in the C plus plus. There are lots of layout engine. We can also see it as layout engine or rendering engine, including Geeko, Edge, WebKit. So these are all the famous rendering engines which you will be able to find. But one of the most popular one is the Blink. Blink is just a rendering engine for the Chromium project for Chrome. In the Chrome, Blink is the rendering engine we will be using. So this rendering engine we will be learning. This rendering engine is responsible for displaying the requested content. So here the rendering engine is responsible for displaying the requested content. How can it do this displaying? So normally what I can say is the rendering can be done in four steps. So this rendering process, whenever you request a URL or request a file, the rendering can be done normally in four steps. So the first one is that the rendering engine has to create the DOM and the CSS ARM. So we learn about the CSS ARM. So we know about the DOM. So first one is that the rendering engine has to create the DOM and CSS ARM. The next three steps. So we told you about the four step, right? The first one is to create the DOM and the CSS ARM. And the next three steps all involve the rendering tree. So generating the rendering tree. It has to go through different phases for generating this rendering tree. So this is also very much important. The first phase is the construction of the rendering tree. The second phase is the layout of the rendering tree. And the final phase is the painting of the data to the screen. So these are the phases it will go. So rendering tree is the very much important. We will learn about this rendering tree. Lot of videos we will be doing. The first phase is the construction of the rendering tree and the second phase is layout of the rendering tree and the final phase is painting of the data to the screen. So we will take a look at all these things very detailed in the upcoming videos. So this is how actually briefly I want to say that how the browser's rendering engine actually works. So this is the uh, briefly in the future videos we will try to see about the more about this rendering engine and all those things. Hope you understood about this browser layout technique. If you have any doubts or any suggestions, please post the comments below to this video. And if you like this video, please do support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you.